What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here and today I'm going to teach you how to set up your Dolby Bar Home Theater Soundbar. As you can see, it comes with the soundbar itself, a wireless subwoofer to add more low end, an optical cable, an RCA to aux cable, a wall mount hardware kit, and a wireless remote with included batteries. Now your sub might come with a string attached to the grill, however you can cut it off like I did with mine with a pair of scissors for a cleaner look. Now mounting the soundbar onto your wall is completely optional, but in case you did want to do that, we provide you the tools to do so. First you'll want to decide where you want to mount the soundbar on your wall. The distance between the center holes on the wall brackets on the back of the soundbar is 28 inches long. So you can use a tape measure to mark that distance on your wall and mark the end so you know where to drill your holes. Now if you're mounting the soundbar onto a drywall without studs, then we recommend you use these anchor pieces for extra security when holding your speaker. Then you can drill your screws where you've made the marks so you can mount your speaker. Then like you're hanging a pin picture, you'll want to feed the heads of the screws onto the center holes of your brackets. We even provide these pads here to protect your wall against the brackets and to provide extra space in between the soundbar and your wall. Alternatively, you can rest it onto a table or stand by using the rubber feet on the bottom of the soundbar. As I mentioned before, the subwoofer is completely wireless, so we can pair it to the soundbar without any cables. To connect the two together, we'll start by turning the soundbar on with the input button on the side of the bar. Then on the back of the sub, you'll want to hold down the WPS button until the light on the back starts to quickly flash. This is letting us know that the subwoofer is looking for the soundbar to connect to. Within 20 to 30 seconds, the light will stop flashing, letting us know that the Dolby bar and the sub have connected successfully. From there, the sub will automatically recognize the soundbar whenever they're turned on so they connect together automatically. Now you can use the included wireless remote to control most of the features of the soundbar. This includes the music playback like pause, play, rewind, fast forward, the volume control to adjust the volume coming out of the soundbar. You can adjust the sound coming out of the soundbar by adjusting the treble and bass controls. You want to use the treble to affect all the high end frequencies coming out of the soundbar and the bass control to adjust all the low end frequencies coming out of the soundbar. We also have all of these preset EQs that are great for different occasions such as music, news, movie, and 3D mode. We can also switch which source is being played through the soundbar with the input button. We can use the mute button to cut out the sound completely. We can use the pair button to disconnect or connect our Bluetooth device, and the power button to turn the soundbar on and off. Now we have many different ways we can connect the TV to the soundbar, including the HDMI audio return channel. For that setup, you'll take your HDMI cable and plug one end into the HDMI audio return channel on the back of your TV. Then you'll take the other end and plug it into your soundbar. Now the most important part of this setup is going into the sound settings of your TV and switching the output to HDMI. Then you'll want to go into the expert settings and switch the audio format to PCM to ensure that the audio gets sent out to the soundbar in high res. Now the soundbar may automatically know to switch to HDMI mode, but in case it doesn't, you can always use the input button on your remote to switch it to that sound source. We can also connect the TV and the soundbar together with the included optical cable. First, you'll want to make sure that the optical output on your TV can be used for audio. It can do that if it says something like audio out optical. Then you'll take one end of your optical cable and plug it into the optical output of your TV. You'll want to be sure to take the caps at the end of each cable off before plugging it into your TV. Now, after you plug it in, you'll know that the cable is receiving signal because the other end actually actually lights up red. So then you can take the other end of the cable and plug that into the optical input of your soundbar. Then you'll want to go back into the sound settings of your TV and switch the output device to audio out optical. And again, you can make sure to go into the advanced or expert settings and switch the audio format to PCM so that the sound comes out of the soundbar in high res. Then you can switch the input to optical mode and you'll be good to go. Now, as the name suggests, the soundbar is able to play back sound in Dolby Digital or Dolby Digital Plus which will really increase the audio quality and give you that cinematic experience whenever you're watching movies or TV shows in your home theater setup. Now you'll only be able to switch the audio format to Dolby Digital for certain movies or shows that were made for this format. You can check to see if the movie or show you're watching has Dolby Digital by looking at the info page on whichever app you're using. So for example, if I'm watching a movie like The Irishman, I can go into the sound settings, go into the expert settings, and switch the audio format to Dolby digital. Now this format will work with both the HDMI and optical output, but we recommend using the HDMI output for the most optimal setup. So let's hear the Dolby Bar and the Dolby Digital sound. Oh wow. You're really 
really hearing that whole range of sound. You hear a lot of the low end again thanks to the sub. And it's very crisp too. You're hearing all of the details. And then just like that booming, booming low end. Oh yeah, so cool. Now there's also many ways we can play music through the Dolby soundbar. For example, there's a USB port so we can plug in any thumb drive with MP3s. There's also an aux input on the back so we can connect any MP3 devices, iPads, etc. Or we can even connect our smartphones or tablets to the soundbar through Bluetooth. To do that, we'll first set the soundbar to Bluetooth mode. Now when you see the display flash in the center like that, that means it's looking for a device to pair. So then you'll want to go into the Bluetooth settings of your smartphone or tablet, search for the device named Dolby Bar, click on it to pair, and you'll know you're connected when you hear that sound and when the display stays lit like that. Ooh. Oh yeah. Hearing a lot of that low end thanks to the subwoofer. A lot of high end too, you're hearing those cymbals nice and clear. Yeah. You can even go up more on bass or treble, turn up the bass a bit. Yeah, there you go. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up your Dolby Bar home theater soundbar. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.